Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Jobber Chat podcast. I know it's been a while. It has been a good wee while since uh, since our last podcast, and you know there's there's not much excuses for that. Um, but today. I know it's late. This video is later than normal. Um, it was meant to be up last week. And then I was like, okay, I'll get it up on Tuesday. Nope, Tuesday was uh, NXT Battleground. So that uh, th that was that was fun. Um, but today we are finally here to review the Garfield movie, the highly anticipated animated movie of Garfield. I'll be honest with you, as, as I always am, going into this movie whenever I seen it two weeks ago, I, I was worried about it. Yeah, I was. Believe it or not, I was. I was really worried about it because, well, when, when, I mean, when it first got announced all those years ago, <laughs> when the first trailer came out, I was like, okay, we'll we'll we'll, we'll see how this goes. You know, it's, it's a Garfield movie, and then Chris Pratt was revealed as the voice of Garfield, no longer. Bill Murray in the role. Strike one. Automatically strike one. And then they announced Samuel Jackson is in the movie. Strike two. <laughs> strike two, right there. Um, strike three came when Snoop Dogg was announced to be doing one of the voices. Yeah. Snoop Dogg. Someone with dog in his name is voicing a cat. Now, the storyline with this mm, tremendous movie, swallow my pride when I said that, uh, Garfield has been living his life with John who in this movie was voiced by Nicholas Holt. As you know, he was in that Renfield, or whatever it was, a couple of years ago. Um, Odie is obviously there. For some reason, Odie has a voice actor. Even though Odie doesn't actually talk in the movie, he just kind of... Mm, 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 like, he makes, like, noises. You really hired a guy... You hired poor Harvey something, Harvey something. You hired this guy to just go, hmm, 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 You just made him make noises in the studio. I, I can't wait for the behind the scenes of him just going, hmm, 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 he didn't actually talk, which I was thankful for, because I didn't want Odie to speak. Odie is a character who should never talk. He tells a story through his facial expressions. That's it. That's all we need, really. And then we have Vic. This is Samuel Jackson's character, Garfield's father, Vic, who... Abandoned Garfield when he was a little kitten. But apparently he did come back. The way this movie is designed is that Garfield holds this grudge against Vic. And he believes that he was abandoned when reality was he wasn't abandoned. And Vic has been coming back to visit him. 
almost every single day, which is a nice touch. I like that. I like that they've given that that arc of, oh, I, I don't like you, I don't like you, you know, you never came back for me, when reality was, he's, he was there. He was there the whole time. He was watching Garfield grow up from across the road in a tree. Now, if my father did that, if he was still alive, God rest his soul, if I find out that my father was living across the road, and I didn't even know it, if I find that out, yeah, you would be, you know, quite, I think personally quite weirded out by that. Then again, that's, that's just me. And Vic did roll with this group, one of them being Snoop Cat. <laughs> That's what I'm calling him from now on, Snoop Cat. He's no longer Snoop Dogg. He is now, and will forever be, Snoop Cat. Yep. I'm calling it. Patent pending. Um, I got off topic there. Um, the, the villain in this movie, Jinx, voiced by Hannah Waddingham. Waddingham, I never got her last name until now. Uh, Hannah Waddingham, who was in that Ryan Gosling movie, Free Guy, where she also, Fall Guy, sorry, not Free Guy, Free Guy's Ryan Reynolds. See, when you have two Ryans, and they both have a movie with Guy in the title, and it starts with an F, Free, Fall, yeah, you're going to get messed up, but... Yeah, she was in Fall Guy as a villain, and she plays a villain here. This Jinx cat used to roll with Vic, and they robbed this dairy farm or something, and then... Jinx got caught and went to the pound for a couple of years while Vic abandoned her and now she, she found out that Garfield was the son of Vic. So that's why he got roped into this and she wants them to go and rob the same dairy farm and then make it all like a hoax. For, you know, him getting caught and then he goes to the pound. But the plan goes off the rails and Vic leaves Garfield behind. And he takes the truck to pay off his debt. But then she's going to throw him off a bridge. For a Garfield movie, this is really dark. For a Garfield movie. Uh, come on, off a bridge? Really? A bridge? Yeah. A bridge. I didn't get it either. <laughs> but yeah, uh, again, off track. Um, in this farm, I mentioned in my vlog that there was a romance angle in this movie. And I mentioned that it wasn't John and Liz. Liz was in the movie, the, the nurse, she was in the movie, but she didn't really do much and didn't really have, like, a vital role like she does in the live-action movies, the, the, the good ones. No, the romance angle was between a bull and a cow. This bull and cow were like the face of this dairy company that Jinx and Garfield had to rob once upon a time ago. But something happened with the bull, bull called Otto. Can't remember the name of the cow, but uh, Otto was sent away. And he wanted the cow to come with him. Stick with me here. Because apparently they 
were lovers. Yeah, the, the, the bull and the cow were lovers and they got separated and he wanted to be with her but she was she was like an attraction at this place at the at the dairy farm or whatever and anytime he would try to go in the security was upped like it was like electric fences and everything and the the head security chick was a, was a complete badass again can't remember her name I think it was Marge. Homie! No, not that Marge. This movie was all over the place, okay? It really was. Yes, it did have some emotional moments where, you know, we got to see young Garfield and then Vic coming to live with Garfield. I think that was a nice moment. There was an actor in this movie who I didn't actually realize, I forgot, completely forgot to mention it in my vlog. A guy called Angus Clyde. I didn't know that he had actually passed away last year. He was in that movie, Abigail, with Alicia Weir and uh, Dan Stevens and Catherine Newton. He, I didn't realize that he had passed away. Even when I was doing my Abigail vlog, I, I didn't notice at the time. And yeah, I didn't realize that he has actually uh, passed away. Uh, when did he die? He died the 31st of July, 2023. Like that's that's almost a year away since he died. And I, I didn't know that. Yeah, he, he was an actor known for Abigail, Your Lucky Day, and Euphoria. That's, um, I've heard of Euphoria. That's uh, Zendaya. I know a couple of other people in it. Uh, I think Sydney Sweeney was in it as well, that Euphoria. Um, yeah, Sydney Sweeney. Uh, uh, yeah, so like, there's different, it's, it's, it's a series, obviously, and I think season four is just coming back or something. I've seen the videos of people talking about this euphoria thing. A look at life for a group of high school students as they grapple with issues of drugs, sex, and violence. <laughs> yeah, so that's, that's what that is. But um, yeah, I didn't realize that he was also in this movie. So, you know, that's... That's quite nice that they, they had it, and I think they did have something in Abigail. Again, I didn't mention it at the time, but I should have that they had, like, oh, dedicated. This movie was dedicated to him. And yeah, no, that's, uh, that is going to do it, ladies and gentlemen. It is a short podcast. I can't even remember what rating I give this movie. Um... When this video comes out, it is the 13th, so Clash at the Castle is coming up uh, on Saturday, the 15th, but I'm, I'm away for the weekend, I'm away with the church, uh, they're having a wee weekend away from the 14th to the 16th. So my podcast for Clash of the Castle will be out on Tuesday, the 18th. And next week, next week, the 21st, we are off to see Paul Smith up at the SSE. That will be my tour video. Um, that tour video won't be out until the 25th. Because, you know, I'm seeing it on a Friday, and then by the time it comes out, I'm seeing Inside Out 2 on Tuesday as well. When this video comes out, this podcast comes out, I'm going to see that movie Sting that I said I wasn't going to see. 
Um, go listen to my podcast for NXT Battleground that went out on Tuesday. I forgot that it was coming out on Sunday there, uh, Sunday the 9th. Uh, but yeah, so video schedule going forward will be my Clash at the Castle review or my podcast. I've got nothing on the 20th. Shush. I've got nothing on the 20th, so shut up. Shush, PS4. Five. Shut up. <laughs> I've got nothing on the 20th, so currently right now, when this when this podcast comes out, it is the 13th of June. We've got Clash of the Castle on the 18th, nothing on the 20th, and then my tour video for Paul Smith will be out on the 25th, and then the 27th. 27th will probably be my podcast for Inside Out 2, because then, you know, I've got a week and a half from seeing it to doing my podcast on that. And then in July, hmm, July's an interesting one because we're about a month and a half away from Starlight Express. Now, when this podcast comes out, Starlight Express would have already had a few shows behind their belt because they did their first production. They did their first show today when, it, when I'm recording this on the 8th, the 8th of June. Their first show, their opening show was tonight when I'm recording this podcast. But by the time this podcast actually comes out, they would have had... eight shows behind them already and I'm doing my best to avoid spoilers to see what you know the stage or anything looks like what the arena looks like I'm doing my best to avoid that kind of stuff even though every post on social media that they make I'm like hmm trailer can I have a trailer is that possible can I have a trailer that would be nice a trailer please I do want a trailer, because if I get a trailer, then, you know, it gets me a little bit hyped. But I am trying to do my best to avoid looking at anything. But that's on the 24th of July. We have to see Matilda first. Matilda the musical is on my birthday, the 23rd of July. So that's like less than a month away, basically. But the month of July, movie-wise, uh, Deadpool and Wolverine, that's on the 26th. Uh, we have a movie called Twisters coming out, or Tornadoes. No, it's, twi it's Twisters. It's Twisters. Um, also in July, Money in the Bank is happening. And I don't know about NXT. I only know NXT Battleground, which has been, been done already. Uh... But yeah, Money in the Bank is in July, and then Summer Slams in August. Also in August, I think I've said this, but I'm not, I'm not vlogging it or touring it or tripping it, <laughs> whatever you want to call it. In August, we have a sing along live up at the Grand Opera House for Matilda the Musical, and then other shows. Obviously, I, I, I don't think I've said to you that I booked my Disney on Ice tickets. I did. I did book my Disney on Ice tickets. Yes, they went on sale uh, the 24th of May. So yeah, I, I don't think that I... Did I? Did I mention that? I, I don't think I did. Did I? What was my last podcast? My last podcast was on the 28th. That was King and Queen of the Ring. Did I mention Disney on Ice? No, my last movie review was If, and that was on the 16th. So, yeah, I, I haven't mentioned that my tickets are booked for Disney on Ice on 
the 8th of December, it's a Sunday, and I think we're in the morning slot for that. So that's Disney on Ice um, Road Trip Adventures. We're booked in for that on whatever I said. I, th I can't remember now. I can't even remember. I I've thrown myself up just talking about this, but uh, ladies and gentlemen, Thank you for watching. I've been Ryan Jeff City 2. This has been your Jobber Chat Podcast. And I will see you on Tuesday for my Clash at the Castle review. Even though I'm not going to be here to watch it live, I'm going to have to catch up at some point on Sunday. And then I'll record the podcast on Monday and it'll be up on Tuesday. So, yeah. <laughs> We've got some great matches for Clash at the Castle, I'm not going to lie. Cody Rhodes versus AJ Styles in an I Quit match. Drew McIntyre versus Damian Priest. Chad Gable and Sami Zayn. Liv doesn't have a match yet. Bailey versus Piper Niven is going to be a good one. Uh, there's a women's triple threat. It's a tag team treat, like match. It's for the women's tag team titles. So part of me doesn't give, you know. But on the other side, I'm like, okay, it could be good because Alba Fire and Isla Dawn. I, I, Isla Dawn. Isla Dawn. Isla. I don't fucking know her name. But yeah, they're in that match. And I, as much as I want them to win, as I mentioned at the King and Queen of the Ring, predictable. So guys, I will see you for my Clash of the Castle podcast review. And then I'll see you on the 25th for Paul Smith. Don't be expecting that to be a long video, okay? That Paul Smith one, don't be expecting it to be long. There's only so much I can do and so much I can record with Paul Smith. So yeah, don't... Uh, don't get your hopes up, people. Don't get your hopes up for a big video. Just, just don't. Just, just don't.